I'm not just like getting into bodybuilding to like do a couple shows, build my resume up so I can, you know, do some online preps or start a coaching. Like I literally am getting into this to change the whole sport, to change the complete like future of it and make history. What I have in my hand, it is nine pounds, 14 ounces, a baby boy. Now, no matter what, I will be forever the myth. Sergio Oliva Jr. That's right, folks, you know the name. I think growing up with my dad being big, you know, like I knew what big was, I knew what the best was. I just wasn't gonna do bodybuilding unless I could be the best one day. I mean, it's too bad that your father passed away way, way too early. But if he would see this picture, he would be laughing and he would be smiling and he would be the happiest guy in the world. So I just want you to know, on his behalf, I can tell you, and on my behalf, how proud we are of you. Once I realized I was really into bodybuilding and I wanted to pursue it to be a pro, I studied everything. I read every book I could, every encyclopedia of bodybuilding that's out there, all without really training. I just knew that that's something I wanted to get into. And then once I started trying to join gyms, uh, so my dad was really going above and beyond to try and stop me from joining gyms and stuff like that. So I would try and sneak to gyms that I didn't think he knew about. And um, he found out about them. Why do you think he was so resilient for me to do bodybuilding? Um, he did get, you know, screwed big time by the sport. You know, times were different back in the 60s and 70s. And him being the only colored person um, to win an Olympia, let alone probably any shows besides Robbie Robinson, it was just rare. And, I'm, and I think there's a lot that he dealt with. And I tried to explain to him that it was 40 plus years ago and times have changed. But then I started to realize now that I'm older, I think it was just more that he grew up in Cuba. He only went to third grade. You know, he's been working on farms, you know, when he was a little kid, escaped from Cuba, when he was supposed to go to the Olympics. You know, he has this whole crazy elaborate story of his life to get to America, to become a Chicago cop, be a three-time Mr. Olympia, to have a kid. The last thing you want your son to do is now do something not through school. So now me being older and, and me being more mature, I can understand that he went through all that. I think he really just wanted me to be a, and as he would say it all the time, doctor, lawyer, architect. He would just name those things and he was just so crazy about school. But I don't think that he ever realized that I was him. And if he would have realized that I am just like him with a lot of things, he would have known that just school wasn't my thing. And it wasn't my dad's either. So I really didn't even pursue bodybuilding until 2006. I started so late and it literally took me nine or 10 years to figure it out. This one, lightweight novice, second place. So that was 170 pounds. So that was 100 pounds from what I was last year. So I'm hoping I gained about eight to 10 pounds in the last two years. So I would have then gained 110 pounds since I started bodybuilding. So this is one of my dad's trophies and this one. And this one's so heavy, I can't even pick it up. And I swear to God, like you can't do it on video, or you can't tell, but this trophy is so heavy. I'll get, I should film you holding it because it makes no sense, but it shows the quality of the trophies back in the day compared to my Nationals trophy, which is this. And with the stand, with my Tampa and Olympia medals on it, is not even as heavy as this. This thing is so heavy, but I don't know what it's made out of, friggin' marble. But yeah, it's got like the Coliseum on the top. Like they used to go all out. 
just a completely different game. And I'm in a race where I'm being judged by people's opinions and people's opinions can change. And depending on what era you're in, the criteria can change. And that's the biggest thing is that in my dad's era, they would ha they'd be under one single light, a shadow, a spotlight. It created shadows underneath and casted these like monumental statuous figures. And then as bodybuilding grew, we started tearing down the body individually. This needs to be this kind of condition. This needs to be this kind of big. This is the shape that we're looking for. And then as we've evolved and going through the eras, now they want all of it. They want where, yeah, you have to be proportioned symmetrical, but at the same time, you have to be so dry and so peeled in some areas that actually, unless you were a professional bodybuilder, you wouldn't know that to have shredded glutes and hams, you're gonna have to lose something else. It's just how science works. Some of these guys are pushing under 3% body fat. So no matter what, once you're pushing that threshold of dying on stage, you're that close to death, something's gonna give and take. And that's the hard part of bodybuilding is you have to figure out how shredded do I get without losing this or vice versa, you know, how big can I get without losing condition? And that's just not something they had to deal with back in the day. My goal in my career is I, I want to win the Arnold. Like that's something I definitely want to win. But I also understand that that's something, it takes time. You're not going to go into the Arnold and beat past Arnold champions. Like they're not all of a sudden going to now not know how to do their job. This is like, this is unbelievable, let me tell you. To, uh, in Columbus, 50 years ago, I was posing here with your dad in Columbus, Ohio. Me and my friends over there, we've been, we've been driving to this show for a long time, every year. I've driven here every year on my own from Chicago, yeah, from Florida, time. from North Carolina, just to come watch the show. Sports, and, right? and, and it's really for the real fans. Right and, and I wanted to say everyone here tonight is a true fan of bodybuilding. With everything that happened this weekend and, 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 and the catastrophes, it really showed us the difference between the fitness industry and the bodybuilding industry. And, and we, are, we are one and we are strong and we will always take care of each other. I don't even think about the Olympia. I think about me going to it this year and being in the top, you know, six. I wanna go from last place to first call. I wanna go from last call to first call out. But once you start saying like, I wanna win the Super Bowl, like there's so, you gotta win a playoff game. There's so many stages before that and I think that's a big tell when someone's not all there in their head, when they're already thinking about the Olympia and you haven't even won tough pro shows or the AFC Championship, which is the Arnold. You gotta win that first. And I'm just trying to do those in stages. So my five-year plan would be to be an Arnold Classic Champion. I have my own supplement line, clothes are doing well. And now I'm battling for that top three spot at the Olympia.